Hello and welcome to this new lecture that will be about an overview of water softening. Let's start by defining water hardness. So water hardness is the amount of the dissolved calcium and magnesium ions in the water. So if we have a high calcium and magnesium content within our water, it is known as a hard water and if the concentration is low it is known as a soft water water hardness has no effect on the taste on the smell or on the appearance of the water and most importantly it has no bad effects on the health because actually it contains good minerals for our body but the major problem is the scaling we will have a calcium carbonate deposit as you can see in this picture and this can occur in our pipes boilers and sanitary appliances within the house and this will affect the efficiency of the water heaters and it will add pressure drop within the scaled pipes Water hardness is classified based on the concentration of calcium carbonate within this water. The water is considered as soft as far as the calcium carbonate concentration is between 0 to 75 milligrams per liter. Between 75 and 100, the water is moderately hard. Between 100 and 300, it is hard and above 300 it is very hard so when the calcium carbonate concentration is above 100 milligrams per liter we can start thinking about installing a water softener within our house to soften the water now let's understand the softening process we cannot reduce the calcium carbonate concentration using a filtration system so the traditional sand filter or carbon filter will not reduce the water hardness it will be the same totally the same what we can do is an ion exchange technique which is the uh, basic concept of a water softener softening will consist of replacing the water hardness ions that are the calcium and magnesium with another ion which is the sodium so we will have a certain media that is the resin and on these media we will have some sodium ions and when it will be in contact with the hard water these ions the, the sodium ions will be exchanged with the calcium and magnesium ions so our water will not contain any more calcium and magnesium ions but it will contain obviously the sodium ions so this is what we call as ion exchange process the sodium ions are exchanged with calcium and magnesium ions let's have a closer look to the resin beads so these ion exchange resins are organic polymers and they have a very tiny size their diameter is between 0.5 to 2 millimeters these beads are placed in a vessel this is a vessel and beside this vessel we have what we call a brine tank this brine tank is filled with a solution that is the sodium chloride solution sodium chloride is the simple table salt and we have here a solution in the liquid form of uh, sodium chloride and we need to rinse these beads these resin beads from time to time with this uh, table salt solution to regenerate the sodium ions so we have already seen that uh, on the extremities of each bead we have sodium ions attached uh, to the bead and to regenerate uh, this sodium ions we need to rinse the beads with 
NaCl or with a, a table salt solution. The resin beads are very durable, no need to change uh, this media. It can last at least 20 years or even longer if uh, the softener is effectively maintained. There are some parameters that can affect the quality and the performance of the resin. First of all, the presence of oxidative chemicals like free chlorine can cause the physical breakdown of the resin. So if our water contains chlorine, we have to pre-treat this water using a carbon filter. The carbon filter can remove the chlorine. Also, a high level of iron can lead to the fouling of the resin beads. Also, in this case, if our water contains iron, we have to pretreat this water using ad an, an adequate method. A high level of suspended matter can also be a source of fouling of the resin beads. Here, the solution can be a simple a sand filter or if the water is highly turbid, we can use coagulation, flocculation, and then sedimentation, depending on the amount of suspended matter in our water. What are the components of a whole house softener? So as we have already seen, we have two main components that are the vessel, filled with the resin beads and this vessel is connected to a brine tank filled with the salt solution. On the top of this vessel we have a control valve. This is a very important item. Also we will see uh, its role later on. So the water will enter through a pipe it will enter into this vessel and it will undergo the iron exchange process and the hard water will exit as a soft water. From time to time, we will have to rinse the resin media with the brine tank solution. The frequency depends on the design calculations. We can have a rinse every two, three, or four days. This depends on the design calculations. At the top of each softener vessel, we have this automatic control valve that will control the five cycle regeneration process of the resin beads. So to regenerate the sodium capacity, we have to go through five cycles. The first cycle is the backwash and here we are cleaning the media, the resin beads. We clean it with a clean water. We reverse the flow, the direction of the flow to clean or remove the silt, sediment and iron particles from the resin. And here the water must be clean. The backwash water that we are using must be a clean water, not a, 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 an infected or a, a dirty water. The second process is the regeneration and here the brine solution is slowly passed through the resin until the resin retains as much as uh, sodium possible. The third step is the slow rinse and here the excess brine is rinsed from the resin then we have the fast rinse the resin bed is compacted for maximum operating efficiency and finally we have the brine refill <laughs>